and then sort of guide Dan uh, the uh, detergent bottle. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, as people join in, just a welcome from the PAC team. This is Andrew McDonald with you as moderator today. And we'll give about a minute for folks to join the webinar. I can tell you that from where I sit here in Toronto, Ontario, it is a beautiful, sunny, summery day. Uh, we're grateful for that. We've had our fair share of rain this spring, so good for the flowers, but uh, nice to have some sunshine. Okay, I see, uh, you know, people are still joining, but we I've got some introductory remarks, just some housekeeping. So let's get started and then, and then we'll get into the heart of it uh, soon enough. So again, I'm Andrew McDonald from PAC Global. Thank you for making time to join us today as we focus on a tool developed by PAC Global called PIP360 or Packaging Innovation Pathway to 360. And in particular, we focus today on our version two improvements highlighted by compliance with the Consumer Goods Forum golden design rules for plastic packaging. But to be clear, as Dan will explain shortly, PIP360 is a tool for all packaging materials, not only for plastics. So we'll lead into the main event with some introductions, starting with PAC Global, uh, or PAC for short. Uh, PAC is a nonprofit industry association with members across the packaging value chain and increasingly from around the world. Uh, education and training are central to PAC and we offer a variety of activities like today for the packaging community to learn together. And PAC Next is one of the main ways we do this. Uh, Lindsay, you can go to the next slide. Uh, I quarterback our PAC Next team. Uh, we're a five member team that offers a wealth of experience, resources, and practical advice related to taking action on packaging sustainability and circularity. Uh, that practical advice extends to consulting services, uh, which we've offered to a number of organizations and which I'll mention again at the end. Uh, for my part, along with moderating PAC Next webinars, I co teach with Dan Lance our packaging circularity course and offer particular expertise with reusable and refillable packaging. Next slide, please. Here's a quick peek at some of our upcoming Pack Next activities. We've got our Disruptors Summit the week after next. We're very excited about that right here in Toronto, uh, followed by an IFS Pack Secure uh, training session on the 13th and 14th. Uh, Dan, then on the 20th, Dan Lance, uh, who is an expert advisor to the Consumer Goods Forum on the Golden Design Rules, will lead a two-hour session on the GDRs, as they're called. And then our course. So Dan and I just finished delivering our, call it our winter spring uh, session, and we'll do it again in the fall. So we encourage you to uh, check out uh, in more detail the course uh, at the PAC Global website, and you see there the six two-hour modules that we offer that comprise the course. And, and in general, visit PAC.Global for more details on all things PAC. Next slide, please. So for today, uh, Dan Lance is going to offer a brief background to PIP360, why it was created, what it does, how it's evolved uh, to version two. And then thanks to a current PIP360 user, Smuckers, Dan will score one of their packages to help illustrate how it works, including uh, just running through a scenario of a particular pack. And then 
uh, we're very lucky to be joined by Lucas Martinovic from Silgan Plastics. Lucas will share some of Silgan's experiences working with the tool and also score a pack with Dan. After that, we'll open it up to Q&A. Please avail yourselves of the chat. All questions are good questions. We welcome them. I will add, uh, it, given that we're using the tool live, Dan's got to wrestle with toggling between screens and so forth. So just bear with us uh, when that happens. So without further ado, Dan Lance, our first presenter, familiar to many, but for those who don't know Dan, he is co-executive director of PAC Next alongside our US-based team member, Alan Blake. Dan has well over 30 years experience in end-of-life materials management. He worked with Stewardship Ontario in the design of the Blue Box program and is deeply involved in the development of EPR programs across Canada and now in many US states. As I mentioned earlier, Dan is recognized by the Consumer Goods Forum as a technical expert for the golden design rules. He has specialist knowledge in EPR, package design optimization, and recycling facility design and operation. I have learned a tremendous amount from Dan. We're lucky to have him with us today. So without further ado, Dan, the floor is yours. Thanks very much, Andrew, uh, for the kind introduction. And uh, can everybody tell me what they're seeing on their screen? Is it the full presentation mode? I hope. It is, Dan. Yeah, I've got packaging innovation with the pathway to 60 with uh, bullets. Thank you. Normally, it's surrounded by a red red square. It isn't today. So thank you. So uh, I'm just going to dive right in and do, give you a brief introduction to PIP360. Uh, we started developing PIP360. Good grief. I think it's now about three and a half years ago. At a, a leadership council of about 35 different companies that were involved in the early generation to create a minimal viable product. Um, it was a good starting point. It really was. But there was immediately, um, it was recognized there was a need for PIP360 to be able to do more. So right after we launched the MP, we immediately started developing PIP360 version 2, which we've now had out for um, close to a year. But And and the new one is, is much more robust. It does an awful lot more for you, and I'm just going to step you through what that does. So the circular benchmarking tool... 360, of course, 360 degrees in a circle. That's where the, the uh, circ comes from, circularity. Um, so we create a score between 0 to 360. It scores all packaging materials, as, as uh, Andrew alluded to. It isn't just a, This isn't just plastics. This is everything. Paper, plastic, steel, aseptic, glass. Uh, you can even put wood in if you want. You won't get a score for it because it, we don't recycle wood in through a traditional system. But uh, we, you can actually look at wood if you have a part of a part of a package that has that. We look at the package in terms of its reusability, recyclability, compostable, or a combination of recyclable, compostable. I often get question, you know, well, I don't know if my package is recyclable. You put it in as a, the the starting point, and the default is recyclable packaging because you'd be surprised how much packaging in the marketplace actually gets recycled, even though it might not be marked recyclable. Think of um, your typical toothpaste tube, for example, from Colgate. Um, a lot of programs don't accept them, but they will get recycled. So you put it in as that, and we go from there. The model includes 75 packaging media. So again, across those six categories, we've got 75 different options for packaging types. <clears throat> and uh, we tried to make it as succinct as possible so that you're choosing the right material. The first version of the model didn't have that many options. It had about half that. And we were often hunting and packing to choose, oh, does it go here? Does it go here? And how's it going to affect the score? Now you have a very discrete list of materials, which makes it much easier to get a, a closer score. It takes no more than five, even 10 minutes on a, on a multiple packaging element. So if you have five or six elements in a package, you can have as many as you want, by the way. There's no limit. Um, but it... it once you get used to the model, you can create a score in as little as three or four minutes. But generally speaking, it'll take you about five to ten minutes to score a package, and it includes it includes everything. So, oops, 
So the key inputs for the model, this is what you need to, to use PIP360 to create a score is how much has the packaging been reduced when compared to the uh, current package you have in the marketplace. Material composition, including percentage use of bio-based plastics, percentage of FSC fibers and recycled content. You need to know, I'm, I'm missing a bullet here. You need to know the weight of each one of your packaging elements. Uh, sorry, it is out, out there at the bottom, my apologies. So you need to know the weight of each of the packaging elements. You need to know what your barriers and fillers and other factors are because uh, like polypropylene is a prime example of, of a plastic that uses a lot of fillers, the, the little punnets, the clamshells you see in the produce aisle. There's so much filler in there that it makes it very difficult to recycle and you can't make plastic out of stone. So the model will, will account for that when it's giving you your score. For reusables, you need the number of reuses. And for compostables, to get a score, it must be a certified compostable package. If it's not certified compostable, when you put your thing in, it won't give you a score. Then the model calculates a score and provides pathways to circularity. So once you get your baseline score, you're going to get a report card. And on the report card, it'll give you examples of how to get a better score. Increase your use of recycled content, typically, or, or of bio-based plastic. Increase your reduction of the packaging um, weight are all examples of what you might see on your, on your report card to get a better score. Now, did not have anything that's on this page right now. We added these in uh, at a request from users of the model and just from general comments we had coming in from, from uh, our leadership council to pack next. And so we said, okay, let's go put them in. They don't get included in your score, but they are there as a value added uh, material for, for your consideration. So the first is, GHG emissions per package and per gram of package. It's based on the US EPA waste reduction model, warm model. Um, it is US based, even though your scores are based on recycling in Canada, <clears throat> we do use the US EPA warm model because there isn't an equivalent one for Canada. The warm model has been around, well, I've been using it for more than a quarter century. Uh, it's well respected. It is generic though. So bear that in mind when you get your scores, if you're making your packaging in Saskatchewan, for example, you, the, your GHG emissions would be worse than they are if you're making them in British Columbia or, or Quebec, where it's all hydropower, because it has to take the average, right, for the, and in this case, the average for the United States. So just keep that in mind. However, when you're comparing package to package, it's, it's quite a reasonable approximation. Um, it, we also provide currently posted EPR fees by province. Now, with the move to... Uh, multiple pros in Ontario. It's going to get more difficult. We're, we, we're looking into getting the new EPR fees um, and using them for future years. But right now, the, the fees that are posted are the current ones that are available publicly. You can actually look them up. So we'll give you your EPR fees by your package and we'll do it by each province. And then we do a Canadian average, which is just prorated by population. So we'll show you this all when we uh, we get into it. A report card on the package's compliance or non-compliance with the Consumer Goods Forum's Golden Design Rules. So as more and more companies sign on to following GDRs and Canada Plastics Pact, of course, has fully adopted the GDRs, this model will now take a look at what you're using for your plastic packaging and it'll tell you whether or not you're in line or running counter to the Golden Design Rules. And then it, if you aren't, or you aren't running in line with the GDRs, it'll tell you how to change your packaging to become GDR compliant. <clears throat> so just to show you the level of, of granularity that we've now got in terms of choosing materials, we have 36 plastics categories. Just ignore the little RR and NR that this is something that was for internal use. Um, this is from the Excel spreadsheet. Of course, you don't see this. It's an online tool. I will be showing it to you very shortly. Um, you'll see the material list, but you won't see the RR and NR. That's just, that was for my use and for the leadership council's use. So there's the list of all the materials that we've got here. You can see it's very, very dis discreetly broken down. And we get into differences between PET clear and PET opaque, for example, just to show you. And it goes through like that, black plastic versus not black plastic, because it all has impacts on recyclability of, of uh, packaging. So here's just... Uh, some report cards shows you how PIP360 works. The first one here is for a colored PET bottle. This is for current beverage. 
dairy bottle. This is a this is a real product that's in the marketplace. It comes with a colored PET bottle. Now, technically, it's considered recyclable. That's what you score it in. Now, generally speaking, it doesn't get recycled, although I have found out recently that they are starting to capture and recycle colored PET bottles, but only in limited amounts, and it depends on who, where it's going. So this is uh, opaque. So you can see right now that it immediately flags gold design rule number one, which says you're not supposed to use opaque PET. The other thing this bottle has, it's got a PETG label, glycol modified poly PET, polyethylene terephthalate. It is not compatible with the gold design rules. It also makes it very difficult for the markets for PET. They don't like PETG. It's a disruptor to PET recycling. So it flags again under gold design rule number one because you're not compatible by using PETG. Another thing with this one is it's got a cap, which is black. And so it flags on remove problematic elements from packaging. It says black is not consistent with golden design rule number two. So it's got three flags on it. it. Tells you what to do to overcome these three flags. Here's your pathways, you know, reduce the packaging weight, increase use of recycled content, increase use of bio-based plastics. Gets a 38, which doesn't sound very good, but remember this is a baseline. You're gonna improve from your packaging. Is CO2 emissions work out to 84.95 grams and your EPR fees are 1.77 cents across Canada on average, again, if assuming your sales are equivalent to population. A replacement package for this dairy beverage is a um, HDP bottle, right? Now the HDP, it's natural HDPE. Um, the, the lid has been changed from black. It's not black anymore, it's blue. So now you don't put in your color choice, by the way, it's either black or not black. So I'm just telling you it's a blue blue package. Again, this is something you would see in the market today. And you can see what's happened is that the score has gone up because it's a better package for recyclability. Colored PET doesn't get recycled very much. Natural HDP gets recycled quite readily. So the score goes up to 85. You've still got the pathways here. Again, similar because you've got no content. Remember, this is a circularity model. To be circular, you should be using recycled content or at least use bio-based plastic. Um, you'll score better with recycled content. I'll tell you that right now. I won't tell you how much than you will with bio-based, but bio-based will give you some credits. Notice that the golden design rules are fine now. Your eCO2 emissions have dropped by about 40% and your, um, your uh, EPR fees have dropped from 1.77 to 1.13 for Canada. Now what we've done is we've taken this same HDP bottle and made it from a from 100% recycled content. So it's a huge jump because now you've created a quite circular package. Still got the blue cap on there. Your golden design real compliant, right? Now it's reduced your packaging weight. Actually, I don't think this is 100% because it's still telling you to increase your use of recycled content. I think it might be 90. And then increase use of bio-based plastic. Notice your ECO2 emissions gone down substantially because you've gone a circular package now. So what's happening is, is you're getting all that credit for using recycled content in your package. The recycling rate's the same for this bottle as this bottle. Uh, Bio-based or recycled content HDP or recycled content PET does not affect recyclability or it's how much gets recycled. So you're gonna get full credit for all that, but you're getting now the credit for using recycled content in your in your ECO2 emissions. Notice your EPR fees don't change though. One of the things that eco-modulation, there's a word you're gonna hear more and more all the time. Quebec's looking into it now. Other provinces are thinking about it. The US is really strongly pushing for eco-modulation. So this would get credit for the recycled content under with eco-modulation right now. You don't in the current models in Canada, EPR models. So it's still 1.13 cents. So with that, this is what the opening page looks like. I'm going to stop sharing and uh, we are going to, I'm going to get that spooled up on my computer and this is what we're going to score, the Smucker's package, right? So this is the information that we need on, on scoring it. I know what the lidding is made out of in the label, so that's fine. I didn't, they didn't provide that, but uh, we have talked to Smucker's in the past. So with that, I will stop sharing and Andrew, if you want to, if there's any questions while I'm getting this set up. I will gladly take them now. Uh, yeah, th thanks, Dan. Yeah, good. Uh, so, question from Phil. 
uh, will the model tell the difference in any way between mechanically recycled and chemically recycled uh, post-consumer recycled material? Uh, right now, the US EPA model just says recycling. And because probably 98% or more of recycling is mechanical, I would suggest it's not included at this time. Got it. Okay. And off the top, I said uh, use the chat, but of course, in webinar mode, we do have the Q&A. So Q&A is preferred, but uh, however you would like to ask a question, please do so. So thanks for that one. That's it for the moment, Dan. Uh, so yeah, we're 20 past the hour. Um, we'll do the Smuckers demo and then we'll connect with Lucas. Okay. You see the PIP360 model up on the screen now? Yes. Okay. You'll excuse me, folks. I've got two screens, so it's not that I'm not looking at you through my camera. I'm just on my other screen, so I'm looking at the screen over here now. So this is the opening page uh, after the sign-in page I just showed you. I've signed in. Um, and so now you're seeing create a new score. All right. We'll just go there. You can go to your home page. It does keep track of all of your packaging. Ignore the fact that it says Crow's Nest Environmental. That's my my company. My email is that. It's so it's assigned to that. It's the way I was signed up on this. I don't have a PAC global. We don't have PAC global email addresses, so don't get confused by that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So now we're going to add a product. And so Smuckers has given us uh, a product to add, and uh, I don't know what the SKU number is, so I'll just make one up for this. And the product name is Folgers Coffee. Product segment, so this is coffee and tea, and it's coffee. The size is 312, oh, sorry, 816 grams, my apologies. Now this is important. Um, that you put the unit of measuring correctly because one of the measuring elements of the score is packaging intensity. Uh, I don't think I actually mentioned that earlier, but packaging intensity is included in your score because efficiency of packaging you, it actually falls with golden design rule number three, which is removal of excess packaging, although it does flow, it does, it does apply only to flexibles. But the idea is that if you have too much packaging, you have too much packaging relative to the weight of product delivered, then that's excess packaging. So you want to get your product to packaging ratio ideally set that you're delivering the most product for the least amount of packaging, respecting that you're not compromising product quality, shelf life, and safety to the consumer. Of course, remember the role of packaging is not to be recycled, but to deliver products safely to the consumer. So we only have Canada right now. Um, so you, you'll choose Canada as a region, and then you're going to add the package. So the package name description is, this is an HDPE, and believe it or not, I know it looks like a tub, but it is a bottle by its by the way it's made. Red. So this is a current package. So we're going to say current package. It is recyclable. It isn't a replacement package. We don't have any information on a package it replaced. Uh, you could technically, if you put, click replacement package, you can look up another one that you've already scored and you can just add that in. It'll automatically grab the information. Um, so you say replacement. If you are replacing it, so say you were comparing it against uh, an old steel can that Folgers had a number of years ago, you could put in the weight of that old steel container and then it would give you credit if uh, where possible for packaging reduction. So this is where you would put in your packaging, previous packaging weight. Okay. And then any packaging notes you want to place here, you do that. No. I don't have a replacement package. Add component. It's the component name. So we'll, we'll go by the largest to the smallest. So the first thing is the canister. Material category. And so you see, here's all the different categories. We've got paper, printed paper, paper packaging, plastic. You're going to see a lot of it lines up with what you're used to seeing for EPR reporting, for those of you who do EPR reporting to the producer responsibility organizations. But otherwise, you know, you go down. In this case, we it's an HDP. So we look for, it's plastic, and then you scroll down. They are in numerical order. So HDPE bottles and jugs colored. It's not black, it's colored. So you click that. 
It is the primary packaging component. All of should be anything but the primary. There's one. The weight of the package that uh, they provided us is 123 grams. Percentage recycled content is, is zero. There's no fiber in this one, so it's automatically zero. No bio-based plastic. And there are no additives in this package, in this uh, tub, sorry, in this bottle. So save. Okay, so there's your first piece. Now we wanna just continue to add packaging elements. So the second one is the lidding. And you don't have to just type in one word. You can go as many as you want. Now the lidding is multi-material, multi-laminated. So again, it's plastic, but it's multi-material, multi-laminated. So we don't have pouches slash lidding. So you just put it under pouch. It's still, it'll, it'll catch it. It captures the right category. So it's multi-material, multi-laminated. The weight of the package is 2.5 grams. Oh, this is all other, right? 0% recycled content, FSC zero, and there's no thing. So save, add a component. You can see how quick it is to do this. If you were, if you only had one packaging element, you'd already be creating a score. Third one is the cap. The material category, uh, <clears throat> plastic package. And if I remember correctly, Andrew, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe this, it doesn't have it marked, but I think, for, oh, it is, it's black polypropylene. So you go down poly, polypropylene and it's black, right? All other, the weight per package is 21.5 and percentage recycle content is zero. No fiber, no bio-based here. Save now. The last lit element is actually a label, but I I'm not sure, but I'm almost, I'm not positive, but I believe it is an in-mold label. So it's actually already inside the inside the, the HDPE. So here's where what you do is instead of putting in label and saying HDPE, what you can do is just go back. You can edit your component, go in and say, okay, great. I'm going to change the weight from, so this is now canister plus in-mold label. And you change the weight from 123. The label was three grams, so you go 126. So there you go. I've now changed the, the packaging component. You can see it's very easy to do. One thing you do have to note is when you're doing this, if you're not sure, go back and double check because once you say create a score and you say, yes, I'm done, you can't go back. You can you can duplicate the package and, and uh, fix it later but you can't go back and, and create a new package. So that's it. You've now entered all the elements you need to get a score for a Folgers coffee container. So you create score. Here's where that, that warning comes up. Make sure it's, you're correct because you can't go back, right? If you do need to go back, you could go back, make your changes and then come forward. So you say continue and there's your score. So we get a 69. And so it says, okay, to get to 360, you need to reduce your packaging weight. Remember, this is the base package. There was no packaging reduction. You would have gotten credit for that. Increase your use of recycled content or bio-based plastics will all help increase your score to 360. Just to let you know how we've changed this from version one is we used to say increase your recycling rate. <laughs> but all the users of the model said, hold on a second, slow down. I don't control the recycling system. So why are you telling me to make sure that more HTPE is recycled? It's a good point. So we we changed the pathways to reflect those things that the packaging producer or the retailer or the brand owner control. So that's why it doesn't show that anymore, as you might see. So the ECO2 emissions are 158, one, one per gram of package. The EPR fees for this package would be about four and a half cents. The golden design rule flags are coming up here. You've got a couple. We've got remove problematic elements. We've got black plastic is being shown. Now, if this was discoverable black plastic, you would put it in as another color because it's not black anymore. From the recycling system's perspective, it shows up as a different color through the optical sorters. But there are very, very few products in the marketplace right now. Tresemme is one where even though it's a black bottle, it's not a black bottle from the way the machine sees it. The other thing that comes up right away is the flexible package, which is the lidding. It's telling you you're using multi-material, multi-laminated. It's not consistent. 
other you have to move to a mono structure. In this case, you need to be a mono PE or mono polypropylene, which may or may not be possible unless you're getting to one of the advanced uh, mono structures that are out there in the marketplace by a number of vendors. So there's your, there you go. You can download it right here and you can save it and then you can score. You can look at different packages. So before I close this, are there any questions before I turn this back over? Just for the likeness of time, we're at 12.30, Andrew, and we got a, a number of packages from, from uh, Lucas yeah, to score. No, so. uh, thanks, Dan. We're in good shape. Uh, there was a question just about target target audience for the tool, a good good question. Um, and whether or not you know con individual consumers are kind of part of the target. And the answer there is no, this is really the primary target audience uh, is uh, manufacturers, packaging manufacturers, as well as brand owners and retailers. Uh, not to say that other organizations couldn't avail themselves of the tool and make some use of it, but that, that, that's our target. Uh, and speaking of whom, uh, you know, we have a uh, packaging manufacturer uh, who has a, a long history uh, using PIP360. I'd like to invite Lucas, uh, invite you to the screen, to the stage. Um, Lucas is, Martinovich is sustainability manager for Silgan Plastics, uh, which produces sustainable rigid plastic packaging throughout North America. Lucas collaborates with all of Silgan's uh, North American operations to identify and implement sustainability projects for their plants and products. Uh, Lucas was involved with the development of PIP360 and is an active contributor to contributor to our PACNEX Leadership Council. So Lucas, thanks for joining us today and turning it over to you uh, for some comments on PIP360 and then we'll run another pack through the tool. Awesome, thank you, Andrew. Um, so I guess I'll just jump right into things. Uh, so PIP360 to us has proven to be uh, a great materials reassurance tool is how I like to look at it, using real data to quantify how certain materials perform in the waste streams that they're being sold into. So one of the major steps in order for the circular economy to work and to get closer to the vision of <clears throat> turning waste into resource, the first step is to do the best we can in making sure that the feedstock that's going into the waste stream can or will be processed into valuable reusable materials. And uh, PIP360, the software, we, we found to be very reasonably priced for how powerful the outputs can be for our conversations around the, the circularity of your package. I like to often say we use it in conjunction with LCAs. You know, LCAs we know as, as a standard to evaluate packaging, but they, they consider so many other things um, such as you know, travel, secondary materials in the packaging, uh, you name it. But a lot of those things might be outside of our control for impacts we can make today or decisions we can make today to set us up to, to offer a more sustainable package in the future. And uh, because it's really quick and simple to add the components into PIP360, it really enhances the message and reassures us you know, directionally that we're, we're going the right way. So, so what you're seeing on the screen now is um, a summary of a, a number of different outputs that we put together. And I like to use this to really give a snapshot of what does it mean when we say, you know, the packaging innovation pathway. And uh, what we're seeing here, for example, are a number of different materials where we're observing 50 grams of material. And when we use a different substrate, we can see how, how different it is in how they'll perform in the end of life uh, recycling stream. So going, I mean, from the top, we can see, you know, PET black, we're, we're really low on the score 36 for, for how circular the material is. But as um, Dan showed earlier, if we go from PET black down a little bit to where we see PET bottle clear, we're jumping from a 31 to a 91 and so on and so forth as we, you know, we add more PCR. And this really just gives you a sample of, you know, three different major plastic uh, materials and lets you see how they're each going to score and, and really how circular they are in their performance, both reflected in the score, but also in the EPR fees. 
So at the end of the day, we do usually want to do, you know, one to two packages at a time. But I found this to be a great chart to really show what, what we're showing here, what we're working towards uh, when we're talking about evaluating different packages um, in the system, you know, uh, make sure it make sure that the package we're designing today can or will be recycled. And uh, PIP360 has done a really good job of uh, easily, quickly and, and uh, really nicely displaying that with a, with a scoring system of zero to 360. So those will be the only points I have, have here. Really just wanted to give you this snapshot and then I'll be passing the floor back over to Dan where, where he can run you through a scenario of uh, a real life conversation that we would have with a customer, just trying to understand, you know, where can we go directionally uh, with our package? You know, not just today, but prepare for the future and and really get that reassurance that I was saying earlier that where we're headed is a circular package because you know we want to make new bottles out of old bottles, waste into resource. So just a couple points that I had to, to add there. Thanks, Lucas. So I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, so Lucas and I are going to work through some examples of packaging that he might share with his customer. So we're going to start with package one. Product name is uh, salad dressing. Salad dressing, that's right. Thank you for the reminder. Salad dressing. All right, so the product segment is food. Size, how many grams is the package? Uh, it is 47 grams or uh, 24 ounces. 24 the ounces? Is 47 oh. grams, but the capacity, 24 ounce. 24 ounces. So that's uh, 720 grams approximately? Yes. Oops. Okay. So 720 grams of salad dressing. We're going to add the package. The package description is, this is a, I think the first one we're going to do is a black PE, or sorry, an opaque PET bottle. Correct. Just for people on the, I don't know how closely you're following to packaging trends or, or regulations around it, but um, New Zealand is about to, is about to uh, eliminate all colored PET. They say that it's not recyclable and they're proposing a regulation to get rid of all colored PET in the, in the country. So that's something to bear in mind. So component name. So this is colored PET bottle, material category, it's plastic packaging. And for now, folks, we're just gonna do the, the bottle. And we can do, unless you wanna add the cap, it only takes a couple seconds. So it's opaque, it's primary, and it's 47 grams, 0% recycled content, no FSC, no bio-based, and no fillers. Save. We want to add a cap, Lucas, because we're just going to be oh, doing. Oh, sorry, we'll keep the focus on the bottle today. Just bottle, just okay. Classic, yeah. classic scenario we'd have with one of our customers. Okay, so that's it. So that's that's how long it can take to score something, folks. Like, what did that take us? Three minutes. So create a score. Nope, that's it. So there's the 36 that uh, Lucas just showed you for the package and it gives you a flag. GDR number one, you're using opaque PET, it's not consistent, so stop using opaque PET. 95.5 grams of ECO2, 1.75 cents per package, right? So there's the, that was the first package that Lucas showed you on, on his list, right? So now we start, we're gonna start showing you how to quickly, you can do comparisons. So we'll start with that one. Now, instead of you having to go and start all over again and put all your information in, what you can do is you can click on the three little dots here and we can duplicate the package. So all your information that you had in your first package is now there. But in this case, we want to edit it, right? Because we're not going to do the... So we're going to edit it. So it's opaque PET. It's not opaque this time. So this time we're moving just to a clear PET bottle. And it's the same, uh, it's same packaging weight and everything. So it's, there's no replacement yet. We're going to do that for the next one. So save. 
right? And in this case, we're going to change this. So you just click on here, you edit the component, and we're going to change it from colored PET to clear PET, right? Still 47 grams. Everything else is done, is the same. There you go. And we're done. So what did that take? About 90 seconds. Create a score. You don't need to go back. Continue. And you immediately move to the 91. And that's the number that Lucas showed you earlier, right? ECO2 emissions have gone down. The reason being is that this is being recycled. So you're getting a recycling credit. You weren't getting a recycling credit really for the other one. Notice the EPR fees stay the same. Okay. So that's how quickly you can now compare it. Now, in this case, we're going to duplicate it again. Right. But now, we're going to start playing with the package. So we're going to edit the package. It's clear PET. Now, technically, you can change the SKU and everything, but in this case, we'll just leave everything alone. So this is a potential package. Now, the replacement package is 47 grams. This is, we're now going to replace this package, right? So the old one we're replacing, a replacement for old 47. This is just notes for yourself. Gram PET clear bottle. Save. So here we're going to edit this component. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change the weight down to 40 grams. All right. So we're going to put some packaging reduction in here of, of uh, seven grams. So you're going to save it. And now, so we've got clear packaging. Oh, I should edit the component and say, Lightweight. Oops. So, so you have, because remember, you get all these report cards, you'll just keep downloading your report cards, but then you can compare them all. And that's how what Lucas did to create that table that he, he made, right? So we're done. That's all we need to do. Create a score. Continue. Now we're up to 105, right? No flags on golden design rules. Your ECO2 emissions have gone down again. Right, because you're it's a lighter weight package. You're not using as many resources, so therefore the packaging uh, ECO2 has gone down, and of course your EPR fees have gone down by about a quarter of a cent a package. So there's another one we've done, right? So we've gone from 30, 36 to 91 to 105, and we're going to duplicate it one more time, and this time we're going to go to edit package, clear PET with, uh, say, what do we want to use, Lucas, 50% recycle uh, 15, content? 15%, because in, in this situation, we'd like to compare, do we go directionally 15% light weighting or 15% PCR? And we'll see how the tool helps us sort of understand which direction is uh, more circular, more beneficial to the circular economy. Okay, so I'm going to take off the packaging reduction. You don't want to. You don't want to get the credit for the reduction and the and the PCR. Uh, no, this one we're just going to compare directionally. Do we focus our efforts on you know new molds to to incorporate the light weighting, or maybe we do we make an investment on some mixing equipment so that we can start introducing PCR for the foreseeable future in our package? Okay, so Almost save that. You notice I've changed this cool. replacement of old package with no PCR. Save. We're going to edit this one. So now we're going to go to 40, back to 47. So we're comparing the 47 to the 47. So it's not lightweighted. It's now ET bottle uh, plus 15% PCR. And we're going to change, we got that to 47, but now we're going to add recycled content of 15%. <clears throat> Save it. Okay, that's it. You're done. Create another container. Create a score. So we go to 124. So light weighting give you credit. PCR gives you even greater credit than did the, the light weighting. So your ECO2 emissions go down, but because the package weight has gone back up again, your EPR fees have gone back up. Again, we don't have equal modulation in Canada, so your EPR fees are, are reflected accordingly. So your score is continually going up. 
No flags on the golden design row. Right. Now, if we want to do, should we do one more, Lucas? We'll do both. Yeah, let, let, let's. The ultimate, we're down the line, you know, we've introduced mixing equipment. We know that the material performs well. We're getting better feed stocks. So now we can also do PCR and light weighting hand in hand. And this is just a great example of, you know, the packaging innovation pathway and, and pathway is really the key word there, right? It's, we can't get it all at once, but we want to make sure we're planning accordingly. And most importantly, headed in the right direction, working with the right materials. Okay, so this was a replacement for the 47 gram clear PET with no PCR. So we save it. And now we're going to change this at a component. We're going to leave the 15%, but we're also going to lightweight the package to 40 grams. So 15% PCR plus lightweighting. Okay, so that's it. You got to 40, 15%, change it to saying it's lightweighted. Save. Okay, so you got everything shown here in your package component. Create a score. Continue. All right. And by the way, all your description, when you change it, it does record it on your on your scorecard. It tells you exactly what each one is. So you're not trying to hold on a second. What, what was that last one? All right. So it tells you what you're doing with your notes. It tells you what your new package description is, your package name. Same SKU, all you've done is just changed all everything. So now we're moved up to 137. So we started at 31. We've now moved to 137. ECO2 has gone down. Your EPR fees are the same as your 40 gram bottle. It ignores the 15% PCR. Um, so, so you see that's quite a quite an evolution in terms of packaging circularity to go from a heavy bottle to a lighter bottle. Following, you know, Ellen MacArthur Foundation, you should lightweight. Uh, sustainable materials management suggests you should lightweight. So you're lightweighting the bottle using less resources, which is a really good thing. Reduction is better than than recycling. And then when you are using recycled content in your bottle, which is really good because you're closing the circle then, right? Circular economy. And you're moving from a 31 to 137. So you've quadrupled your score and then some. You've reduced your ECO2 emissions and uh, you've got a much more circular package. And if you continue to increase recycled content, packaging reduction, et cetera, as it's telling you here, or you're using bio-based plastic, you would see your score continue to increase. So with that, I think, uh, Andrew, we're doing pretty good on time. We are. Yeah. Um, are there any questions? Yes. So Dan, is it easy to just bring up this uh, any scorecard quickly again? Doesn't Which matter. one do you want? Doesn't matter. Uh, most recent or yeah. Yeah, perfect. So uh, a couple of times, including earlier in your presentation, you mentioned the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency in the U.S. Their warm model which is the waste reduction model, which as you said, has been around for a long time. So the question is, what, what are the considerations when, when PIP360 calculates the carbon footprint? And does that include where the, the package is actually manufactured? And I mentioned, you, you briefly mentioned that earlier, but if you could just recap kind of how the warm model supports PIP360 to get to, if everyone looks at bottom right, that ECO2, that carbon dioxide equivalent number um, per gram of packaging, which you see on this scorecard is 40.28. So Dan, could you comment on how the how the WARM, what, what are the considerations involved with the WARM model? Yeah, the, the WARM model is generic based on the uh, electricity coming from across or your energy is across the United States as a whole. It is not geographically specific. Like I said, if you're, if you were to produce this package uh, in a state where it was use of just car coal, for example, Kentucky, I think is one, then your ECO2 emissions would be much. If you're using or going to one more hydropower, so think Pacific Northwest, for example, 
I believe, then you your ECO2 emissions would be lower. Um, we don't have the ability, you, you know, when you do an LCA, you know, the, you know they range in cost from, you can buy an, uh, an LCA light tool for about $3,500 or so. Um, if you want to get into a full-blown LCA, you're talking about $15,000, where you can get into geographically specific uh, understanding of what your emissions are. This is supposed to be comparing package to package using the same assumptions. Now, if you do change where you're manufacturing your package, then your ECO2 emissions accordingly will change. But we don't have that capability, uh, nor considering the cost of what we're providing, uh, it's not reasonable. LCAs are expensive. Um, would love to be able to do a full LCA, but then first of all, you wouldn't be creating scores in, you know, we just created six scores in, in 12 minutes. Um, as opposed to if you if you start adding in all the LCA components, you're going to be looking at hours to do one score. And and that's not the point of PIP 360. That we wanted something that was easy to use, create scores. Uh, when all else is equal, then that and the scores are actually the ECO2 emissions are not part of your score. It's a value added bonus feature of version two of PIP 360. Got it. Thanks, Dan. I hope that that covers off that question. Uh, next up, uh, Dan, you're, I know you're familiar with this one, but we've got an audience member wondering, is there a way to assess packaging for multiple products, kind of batch, you know, batch assessment, if you will, as opposed to one at a time? Well, technically, if you want to put in a thousand of something, you just multiply everything times a thousand. Just make sure that your product delivered is a thousand times. So instead of having, you know, 47 grams, it would be 47,000 grams and your 720 uh, milliliters of salad dressing, it would be 720,000 milliliters of salad dressing. And it's important to understand that because it, part of your score is packaging intensity. So if you actually accidentally put in 720 grams of, of salad dressing, but then you put in 47,000 grams of packaging weight, that's a pretty inefficient package when you think of it. So there's no problem with doing a batch of packages or an individual package. You can either get the score, uh, which is the, you know, the, the score per package. Your score won't change, but um, your ECO2 emissions would change. And of course, your, your uh, EPR fees would change, right? Because it'll be a thousand packages worth of EPR or ECO2 emissions, but there's absolutely no, no reason why you couldn't do a thousand of something or one of something and multiply times a thousand. Either way, it'll come up with the same answer. Got it, okay, good. Thanks, Dan. Uh, we're, we're running up close to the top of the hour, but uh, Lucas, uh, a question for you, perhaps to round out our, our Q and A. Um, what would, when customers come to you uh, seeking support to move ahead on the pathway to packaging circularity and sustainability, what would be a, a common question that they ask where PIP360 ends up being useful? I mean, what are some of the burning questions people come to you with where this is a helpful tool to move things forward? Um, I think an often like a question I'll, I'll field often is, is why are we working with a particular material? You know, um, it's easy to use one's words to, to justify or claim that this material is more circular. You know, I never want to use better, but this material is more circular than the other. And, and the reason I really enjoy introducing PIP360 is it really takes my opinion out of it. And it lets us know, well, the data speaks for itself and lets us know, you know, how one will perform versus another. And uh, I think it really speaks volumes and moving the conversation forward. And again, really getting that reassurance that we know we are headed directionally in the right way for the next 10 years. If we want to make sure our waste that we're producing from our product can be turned into resource. And we're now a direct contributor to the circular economy versus um, creating waste. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Oh, Lucas, I, we just got a couple of minutes, but if you're if you're able, you can join Dan and I on on the stage, so to speak. Uh, 
uh, if, if the camera is working, if it's not, oh, good, there, hello. Uh, you know what, Dan, we're gonna squeeze in one, one final question here and then we've just got a couple of slides in a moment to close things out for, for our audience. Dan, how, does, how can PIP360 help uh, Plastics Pact members, uh, particularly Canada Plastics Pact members, achieve their goals? Well, the GDRs are central to in improving recyclability of packaging or understanding the GDRs and applying them. So CPP, of course, they're, one of their big goals is to have all, past, all plastic packaging recyclable. And then, of course, to increase recycling and to have increased recycle, recycled content. Well, if you're going to have try to get increased recycled content, you first have to recycle the package so that we have product available to make recycled content. And that's one of the stumbling blocks we've got right now is everybody's fighting for not a lot of PET in the marketplace um, and trying to increase the amount of all the plastics that are there. If we eliminate problematic plastics and focus on number one, two, four, and five plastics, so that's PET, HDP, low density polyethylene, LDP, and polypropylene, then we have the plastics that we could possibly put back into recycled feedstock uh, for packaging producers like Lucas who can make their products and then they can provide cert more circular packaging back to their producers or sorry, to their customers. So this, this points everybody in the right direction with how they can become more compliant with the gold design rules, which hopefully will increase recycling rates. Again, helping close the whole circle, right? Yes. Less problematic more in line, larger economies of scale, more product available, more recycled content, more recycled content packaging. So th this this model does all of that for you. A, a virtuous a virtuous cycle. Um, a virtuous but, cycle. Okay, thank you. Lindsay, uh, if we could just go to those last couple of slides and then we'll get people onto their next meeting or onto lunch or whatever's happening in your day. So a couple of things. So I mentioned off the top, PAC, the PAC Next team offers consulting services. We're a team of five, whether it's package design, uh, compliance with food safety, compliance with the GDRs, uh, chemicals of concern like PFAS, EPR, reuse and refill, we've got you covered. Uh, so you see our mission here and we're, we're available to PAC members and non-members to help you make good packaging sustainability decisions. And last slide, please, Lindsay. So with respect to PIP360, uh, we two things going on here. First of all, uh, there's a trial offer for $500 US. You One can avail oneself of up to five scores plus an hour with a PAC Global Consulting team member. And just as an example, this is exactly how Smuckers kind of entered um, through this doorway as a user and then uh, and then graduated to you know the next step um, if it's working for an organization uh, one can then apply that trial offer uh, investment toward an annual license fee and you see the the cost in front of you um, and then at that point you can just run unlimited scores which as you can see from Dan's uh, demonstration you know it's easy to run many scores and compare and contrast, um, even if even from one using one package as the baseline. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please reach out. Uh, you see at the bottom of the screen, Lisa Abraham, our operations director, is our uh, point of contact. Um, and, and please do so. So with that said, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your interest in PIP360. Um, we encourage you to try it out. And with that said, on behalf of Lucas, Dan, and Lindsay, uh, we hope you had a good session today and we look forward to seeing you again soon on an, at another PAC Next event. Thank you everyone. Have a great yeah. afternoon.